morning. Welcome to another Killing My Shelves video. So this was supposed to be a vlog style video, but I don't know what really happened to two of the books that I swore I talked about. I either deleted the clips, which I don't think was likely because I always drag and drop everything to my external hard drive and then delete things, but I think what I did was I didn't click record when I talked about two of these books so I just don't have the footage at all and therefore I did not record the last three books that I read and decided I would just do a wrap up at the end of everything. <laughs> So if you haven't seen any of my other Clear My Shelves video, I will link a playlist right here. I think I made one last time, but essentially I am trying to read five books in every one of these videos that have a similar theme so that I can get them off of my TBR shelf and move them to my red shelf. So we have five books to talk about today. They might seem a little different to each other, but my idea for this video was quick reads, books that would take me less than a day to read. All of these, when I had looked through the audiobooks on Hoopla and Libby, they were all about eight hours long. Maybe a little over, maybe a little under, but around the eight hour mark. And for me, that is like the sweet spot for audiobooks because I tend to listen to things at two times speed. And I just feel like if you have a day where you get to read, reading eight hours in a day might take a little bit of time. So it might be a two day sort of book. But for me, I feel like that's still pretty quick. You can read these within like one to four days, depending on your reading speed, how much time you have to read. So that's what we are doing here. I have read all five of these books, so I'm going to go one by one and tell you all about them. And I will try and remember to include timestamps so you can click along depending on what book you want to talk about. Because I, I could move around and make the backdrop a little bit more inviting and interesting, but I'm just going to sit right here because I am tired. <laughs> All right, starting off, we have Her Night with the Duke by Diana Quincy. And this one, I did not record while I was reading this one because it was happening during the HarperCollins strike and this is published by Avon. So I decided to not record my thoughts during that time, waiting it out to see how that strike would go down. But now we can talk about it here. This is about Delilah Chambers and she is a young widowed woman who loves to travel so she's been on traveling adventures meeting her family and I believe she said that was in like Arabia and on her way back to England where she is going to meet up with her former stepdaughter and stepson to just catch up with them. She goes to an inn because of travel, I don't know, the weather, I can't really remember the reason she ends up in this inn but the innkeeper does not want to give her a room and a man called Elliot Townsend says that she can have his. But then things get a little bit steamy between those two and this is happening like in the very beginning so I'm not spoiling anything here but things get steamy and they go their separate ways. It was just a fun little one night stand. She's a widow and he's just kind of a man that she came across and it's all fine and good until she finds out that the man is actually engaged to her stepdaughter. And then things get a little weird from there. It sounded like an amazing sort of story, just a lot of scandal and intrigue and I ended up not liking it whatsoever. And that is solely because of the hero. I felt like he was so selfish. This woman knew what she wanted. She did not want to be married again. She wanted to travel the world. She wasn't planning on having kids because she didn't think she could have them and that's what her life was going to be like and at multiple points along this journey she tells him like I don't want to be married again. I don't want to be a duchess or anything like that and I just feel like he never really listened to her and it was kind of like a well I can change your mind. I can change your mind sort of deal. So I never loved their love. I loved their steamy parts at the beginning because it was fun. She was a little widow doing whatever she wanted to do and then things just kind of took a turn from there. However her talk of her travels and the things that she saw and everything that she she has like written down from her travels is so fun. I wanted to go traveling because of this and I just wanted her to have a life of adventure and fun and going wherever she wanted to go but it ended up being a two-star read for me. I then read The Mighty Miss Malone by Christopher Paul Curtis and this is about a black family in Indiana during the Great Depression and the daughter is named Deza and the brother, the son, is named Jimmy. Deza is like a genius. She just does so well in school. She's always top of her class so her family is really riding on the fact that she is one day going to 
get out of the situation that they're in that because of her grades because of her intelligence she's going to go far in life and jimmy he is very protective of his family but he is also a really amazing singer so they also kind of think that he's going to do wonderful things with his voice and it's really just about the hardships that this family goes through and everything that they deal with and just the way that they rem remain a family or try to in some situations and the way they try and get back to each other because of some other circumstances and it was really sweet it is a middle grade story and it was a super duper easy read but i did feel like our main character deza just didn't do anything i felt like there was a lot of focus on her intelligence and how smart she was but nothing really came about with her intelligence like that wasn't actually a plot point i expected there to be like a competition based on academics that she could help out her family with that but that never really happened in this but there are some other things that i did enjoy that happened some reveals and some really hard-hitting sad moments so it was a sweet story i would recommend it i just feel like having deza as the main character was the weakest point of this she was sweet and lovely but i feel like it could have been a better point of view to have her brother instead of her as the main character so i think i ended up giving this one four stars and then i read the death of vivek og by a quinky amezi and this one took me the longest to read out of all of these audiobooks i think it was maybe closer to 10 hours i'm not entirely sure but i also couldn't up the speed of this audiobook because of the content it was a little bit heavier than the other ones where i felt like i didn't have to fully pay attention to the other ones as much to be completely honest as i did with this one but i believe i gave this one around three to four stars because some of the content in it was a little questionable for me and i think in my goodreads review i might have gone into that there are also a lot of other goodreads reviews that talk about some of the strange content that is in this or different content maybe not strange is the best word but essentially this is about a family who one day they open their front door and their child is dead on the porch and it's going back and forth with the past and also the afterlife of Vivek Oji and their thoughts and what was going on during that time and the circumstances that led up to this death and what really happened that had Vivek Oji dead on the doorstep. So it's moving in a lot of ways it's also frustrating and other ones just because of the circumstances that this person had to live through and just the environment that they had to grow up in where they couldn't be who they wanted to be and so it was hard emotionally to read but i again struggle with like a kind of detached writing style where i feel like the quickie messy in this one gave more detail and i felt like i got to know the characters a little bit better than the beginning of pet which i did dnf but this one i still just couldn't connect with the characters and i just felt like i was like floating listening to what was happening and never really felt drawn in to what was happening so that was a struggle for me that is a very personal problem for me so i didn't enjoy it as much as i saw other people have enjoyed this one but yeah definitely check out trigger and content warnings this one has a lot of heavy stuff in it but it was good it was good i can't deny that the writing was really well done i just personally couldn't connect to it and i wish that i could have i just don't know if this author's writing style will ever be for me but we will keep drawing i've then read a proposal they can't refuse by natalie kanya and this was gifted to me by robin and robin breeds so i was really eager to get into this one and essentially this is about a woman named camilla and a man named liam and they were childhood best friends growing up because their grandparents were best friends like throughout the war and throughout their adult lives and so they have grown up right next door to each other her family owns a restaurant his family owns a whiskey distillery and along the way they lose their best friendship and kind of become enemies and then because of some scheming grandparents they are told that they need to get married or else their grandparents are going to sell the distillery and the what's it called a restaurant they're going to sell both of those properties and neither of them want that to happen because they want to work and own both the distillery and the restaurant and so they decide to go along with this thing and fake an engagement for their family and there's a lot that goes on into this one there's a lot and there are some hard hitting things because one of the grandparents is very ill and that makes it pretty heart wrenching in that aspect and that aspect alone because I hated these families. The 
only redeeming part was that they cared about their grandparents that is the only thing that i cared about in this book at all the rest of these family members were so totally awful and everything in this book gets blamed on camilla nobody else takes really any ownership for the things that they do or the things that they say and these family members and these friends of these people spit fire when they're mad when things don't go their way they say the worst things absolute possible to these people and it is just like how 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 does that ever get redeemed i don't know i was really just not having a good time with the way that the, these family members treated each other especially how they treated camilla and how they blamed everything on her basically and made her out to seem like she was just this like young mess up of a child when really she wasn't at all ever so i don't know i did not like these characters at all i didn't want them to end up together in the end because his reason for them becoming enemies was just so grabby too so i gave this a two and i wish that i could have loved it because it was gifted to me but like i couldn't and i'm sorry robin if you liked it i'm not sure if you actually read it or if you just saw it and wanted to gift it to me but i tried to love it I tried to it just did not work out it was, it was it was they were so mean they were so mean i would cry if i was in this family moving on <laughs> we're ending on a high with concrete rose this is by angie thomas and this is following maverick who is the father of star in book one the hate you give and it was so good it was so good i won't say that there was a lot of plot to this one because you already really know what happens to him throughout the hate you give but this is just him discovering at the age of 17 that he is going to be a, or that he is a father and then later finding out that he's going to be a father of two and just the things that he does his mind set during that time and how down on himself he felt where he didn't think he was ever going to be able to be a good father to these children and i just adored it so much angie angie thomas just writes some of the best characters i think i've ever read i love every single one of the characters she's ever written i cried during this from sad moments and sweet moments i just felt like maverick was such a great dad and the hate you give and i was so happy to see him become a dad in this one and just fall in love with his kids and it was precious i loved it so much so i highly recommend this one so we're ending with a high i give this one a really high four star for sure but we did it we have read five more books from my tbr shelf which means that we are moving down from 132 to 127 and remember we started at 145 so progress is progress we are doing pretty pretty good for it being only the beginning of march so i would love it if you would subscribe and join me as i try and get this tbr shelf to be at zero by the end of the year well actually i'm trying to get it down to 60 but you know one can dream <laughs> But if you have made it this far, leave me any red emoji that you can find. And I will see you in my next video, which will be out very, very shortly. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.